Can we go on a journey through the word today? Because I'm finding out now that people are not getting a grip. You, you, you have so many people who go to church and who figure that's all it is to serve in the Lord. You just, you just keep showing up week after week. But the real problem is, is that if the gospel is being preached and if it's to be effective at all, it has to bring about change. And where we're, uh, where we're seeing so many, uh, so many people packing out churches in this, what we're not seeing a whole lot of is change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I figured y'all were going to say amen. A amen. What we're not seeing, we're not seeing people who are willing to walk away from sin and hold up the bloodstained banner. What we have now, we have people who want to be trendy. Amen. And everybody wants to be liked and everybody wants to be loved. Amen. But I was telling them in Bible class a couple of weeks ago, amen, that after 2,000 years, Jesus is still controversial. You know, the Bible said he came to his own and his own received him not. He went around doing good, healing all manner of sickness and disease. Amen. Amen. Casting out devils, even raising, feeding 5,000 and 4,000 on two separate occasions. And after he did all of that, some of those same people who were eating those filet of fish sandwiches and and all of that good food were the ones who were crying, crucify him. It's one thing to be here for the blessings. But Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have no part in me. And whereas we're seeing a lot of preaching, we're not seeing a lot of change. So that leads me to believe that what's being preached now, it sounds good, but it's not really the gospel. Because Paul says, I'm not ashamed of this gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God, not unto a new car or a new house, but it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So we've got to get back to preaching the gospel of the king. And you know what? I'm finding out now. This is the perfect time to go back to the basics. Because people now got more degrees than they've ever had in the history of the world. But you don't see a lot of people with good godly common sense. Now common sense ought to tell you you can't be a child of God and a child of the devil at the same time. I don't care how quiet y'all get today. I'm going to preach this because I don't care. Hey, amen. Hey, amen. Hey, amen. Common sense ought to tell us in this hour that if we come out of the world and if we say we are on the Lord's side, then there has to be a change in our lives. What we're having now, we're having a smorgasbord of preaching, but there's not much change going on. And that was never the intent of the gospel. The gospel was never intended to tickle your fancy or to to make you laugh or to play with you look at y'all getting quiet here listen you gotta reach a point of maturity in your life and in your walk with Christ to where when you come to church you come here and you say alright I'm sick of being tickled I'm tired of all y'all ain't saying nothing here I don't need nobody to tickle me I don't need nobody to play with me what I need I need somebody who's gonna give me the word of God stop trying to be my friend stop trying to hang out with me tell me how to get to all y'all ain't saying nothing here Tell me how to make it to heaven. Because I don't care if we prophesy and lay hands on you. And you get 16 cars in one week. The Bible said what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and then lose your soul. It's time out now for making sinners rich by prophesying the blessings of God. Somebody, oh, I don't care if you don't say man. Somebody got to stand in this hour and tell this world that to be on the Lord's side means you've got to come out of sin and you've got to leave I, I don't I just uh, leave sin alone can we deal with this today I have I have solicited some help amen from sister Hody sister Hody you got to keep up with me today St. John's gospel the third chapter the 16th verse what does 
does the Bible say? Now listen. For God this, so loved. This, this scripture here should have been the first scripture, one of the first scriptures that we learned. You know what, ha- what, what, what hurts me in this hour is that we have young people who are 8 and 10 and 12 years old and, and don't know uh, uh, St. John 3.16. Amen. See, those are the type of things they teach you in Sunday school. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Those are the type of fundamental truths that you learn in Sunday school. Amen. But what's happening now, nobody is taking responsibility, amen, to help raise this next generation in the fear of God. So what's happening now is that you have people who are growing tall but don't know God at all. Uh, you, you, you remember in the book of Deuteronomy, he tells the children of Israel, he says, now, these laws and these statutes, you've got to teach them to your children. He said, until your children children and your children's children's children he said let it be a mandate forever in the land amen but then the bible comes to us at the end of the book and said there arose a generation that knew not God now wait a minute he just told us to teach the children so from the time he told us to teach the children to the end of the book how is it that a whole generation grew up and didn't even know God And if we're not careful, that's going to be the testimony for this hour. We'll have a whole generation that don't not, know nothing about the 23rd Psalm. They'll know nothing about St. John 3.16. They won't know Bible scriptures and Bible verses. So when they get out there and in the schools, people trying to sell them cheese and get them hooked on crack and smoking weed. They ain't got nothing to come back. Well, Nancy told us to just say no. You ain't got the power to say no. Y'all ain't saying nothing to hear. Hey man, it's more to it than just saying no. You better have some in you so that when you say no the devil know to leave you alone St. John 3 16 read it for God so loved the world for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son hear this now that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him that whosoever believeth in him should not perish should not perish but have everlasting life but have an everlasting life all right hear this again he says what now For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That means the unregenerated. Those that are without Christ. Those that are lost. Amen. In a world of sin. For God so loved the world. What did he do? That he gave his that he gave his only begotten son. Now listen, love is more than what you say. If you love me, you will do something about it. And God said that he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed that in him. whosoever look at somebody and tell him he was talking about you. Amen. That whosoever believeth in him believeth in him should not perish. Should not perish. But have everlasting but life. But have everlasting life. Now I, I, I know that this is the type of message you would preach on a Tuesday night, but since this is Sunday morning, it's all right. Amen. I, I just want to talk to you for a little while today from the thought what the Bible teaches about salvation that's what I want to deal with today what does the Bible teach us about salvation you know the X-Files the TV show had a tagline and the tagline said something like this that the truth is out there there's a lot we don't know. There's a lot, hey man, that we don't have access to. But the X-Files told us that the truth was out there. In other words, all you have to do is have an open mind uh-huh, and be willing to seek out the truth. Because you heard what the Bible said. Jesus said, it's them that hunger and thirst after righteousness that shall be filled. And so since we understand that the truth really is out there, then we know that there is what we would call an absolute objective truth. In other words, there is a truth that does not depend on anything else to validate it as truth. And that truth we know as God. Amen. God is that truth. He is the greatest power that moves in the universe. Mm -hmm. Peter says it like this. He says it is in him that we live and we move and we have our being. Did you not know that whether or not you recognize him 
uh, does not change the fact that he is still God. And that's why you've got to come to a real saving knowledge of him now. Because you don't want to wait until it's absolutely too late. Because the Bible said whether or not he is your savior, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Which means that he will bring all things under his subjection. Whether or not he is your savior, one day you're going to have to confess him as your Lord which means that he rules over you whether you allow him to change you or not understand this just because you don't want to serve him it does not diminish his lordship oh God y'all getting quiet here today just because you will not submit and give in to him does not diminish his lordship he is lord of lords and king of kings and so now what we have got to do uh -huh, we have got to come to a place now to where we seek out what is real true salvation because what none of us have at our disposal is time to waste you ain't got that much time to waste touch somebody and just tell them neighbor time is winding up amen you don't have time to waste and so what we've got to do now we've got to stop settling for another church experience look at the church getting quiet here that's what people are doing now they're simply settling for the church experience they want to come they want to hear the choir sing they they want to see the people shout amen they want to hear testimonies and they want to come to that lively church where where they'll play the drums and don't mind that dancing on the floor but when we come to church let it not be for another church experience oh God because what you're doing now you are cheating yourself out of something that can turn your whole life around if all you settling for when you come to the house of God is just another shout or another blessing or another prosperity word then you are shortchanging yourself because time is winding up and what God is doing in this hour he's not trying to prepare you for a raise on your job what God is doing in this hour he's trying to prepare you to spend eternity with him in heaven and so all of this overtime amen that's keeping you out of the house of God all of these friends where you don't come to church they can't come to church and if they don't come to church you can't come to church it is time out for that now you know what he oh God you know what Peter said in the book of Acts he said you've got to learn how to save yourself from this untoward generation listen it's no fun going to hell by yourself oh god could i preach here but can i tell you what's even worse is going to hell behind somebody that you thought could do something for you and really couldn't help you at all oh, thank you kind spirit look at somebody and tell them neighbor it's time to serve the lord so what we've got to do in this hour we've got to stop settling for just coming to church but it's time now that we stop being religious and get back to being saved. Mm -hmm. I figured y'all were going to get quiet today. That's why I came with my work clothes on. We've got to get to the point now to where we understand what real salvation is all about. Because as we look at this world that we're living in, and I want you to hear me now, as we look at this world that we're living in today, this world is designed to keep you down. I'm not just talking about financially or fiscally. Amen. Even though, amen, the way we see things working in our government, it's not designed to make you rich. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. They pulling taxes out of your check before you get it. Then when you get it, you got to pay taxes for everything else. Then you got to turn around and pay this tax. And oh, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Even your job is not designed to make you rich. You know what they're doing? Can I tell you? Because I'm your friend. They paying you just enough to keep you from quitting. And you working just hard enough to keep from getting fired. Oh, God. So this world is designed to keep you down. Could I preach on a Sunday morning here? And not only is this natural world designed to keep you suppressed but this spiritual realm that we're living in now do you know there are enemies after your soul this is why I don't care how, how fun life is and I don't care how much you got going for yourself you've got to understand that there is an enemy of your soul and I told you the devil ain't trying to hurt you the devil is not trying to embarrass you you know what the devil is doing the Bible said that it's the thief that come and knock but for the steal to kill and destroy the devil the devil is not trying to break your leg. The devil is trying to kill you. Because
because he knows that if he can catch you outside of the ark of safety you have nothing to look forward to but hell and sadly you got people that are playing in churches going to hell from the pews do you know I wouldn't go to hell from the choir stand I wouldn't go to hell from the usher poet. I wouldn't go to hell from behind the pulpit. Look at y'all ain't saying nothing here. Hey Amen. And now what we have, we got people that are just playing. They're careless with their soul. They don't care. They're just throwing up their hands and living footloose and fancy free. But that is not God's design for somebody who says that they're saved. He said, if you're going to name the name of God, you've got to do what? Depart from iniquity. So since as Peter says it in him, we move and we live and we have our being. Understand this. God has a right to tell you how to live. God has the rights to your life. And you know what I heard somebody say? I heard somebody say, oh, well, the thing is, mm -hmm, I have the right to do what I want to do now. You just have the power to do it. But just because you got the power don't mean you have the right. I have the power to kill people. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. But that don't, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. If you got a gun, all you got to do is squeeze the trigger and somebody can die. But that don't mean you got a right to kill them. And just, oh, look at y'all getting quiet here. And just because you got the power to smoke and power to dope and power to hoe around don't mean you got the right to do none of it because God owns the rights to your life and if God said live holy if God said live right who do you think you are to tell God no who do we think that we are he tells the sun to rise in the morning, the sun rises. He tells the moon to rise at night, the moon rises. He tells the flowers to bloom. He tells the rain to fall. Everything does what God tells it to do. But then he looks at men and women and he says, serve me. Oh, no, not today. Who do you think you are? To tell God no, that you won't serve him. You've got to understand, every one of us when we were born, were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, which means we needed to be delivered. I don't care if you were born rich, it don't mean you were born saved. If you were born famous, that don't mean you were born delivered. You need to be delivered. You can't get down your mama's salvation. You know we got churches like that now. They just believe my mama was a member of the church. She was a praying mother. She was a deaconess. She brought me to church. And that's all you have to say for it. Has there ever been a salvation experience in your own life? Are you still living off the fact that your great, great, great granddaddy was a preacher? The devil is a liar. You have got to come to God for yourself. You've got to fall on the mercy seat and say have mercy on me a sinner just because you were born to a saved family didn't automatically make you saved you've got to repent of your sin that's what we don't want to do now nobody wants to repent we just join churches now okay if you get quiet the doors of the church are open I ain't never known them to be closed Who opened the doors to the church? I thought Jesus opened it. And you know what he said? When I opened the door, can't no man shut it. So how did the door get closed again? And just come here. Shake my hand. I now fellowship you into the body of the devil is a liar. Oh, listen, you can't shake sin off. Shaking the preacher's hand don't make you save. You got to be changed. You got to be delivered. And that's the problem now. We have set up for shaking somebody's hand and putting our name on the church roll. But the real question is, have you repented of your sin? Have you told God you were sorry? Are you willing to walk away from it? Are you willing to live? Look at y'all. I don't care if you get quiet. Are you willing to leave it alone? Because when you shake the preacher's hand, you'll still go out and cuss. Look at y'all ain't saying nothing here. Shaking the preacher's hand you can still go back to the office and have a cigar with him but when you got the holy coach when you've been born again when you don't ask God to forgive you then you can stand up and say if any man be in Christ he is 
a new creature. All things are passed away. And all things are become new. God, y'all ain't sinning here. So the question is, how can you be saved and not new? How did the church get like this? To where we can be saved now and don't nothing change. Oh, I figured y'all were going to get quiet today. How do we get to this point now? To where it's possible to be saved and not be delivered. Sister Oda, give me Matthew 1, 21. How do we get to the point now? To where we can be saved and still not be delivered. Somebody got to preach this gospel. Because that's how people done got screwed up. Because some preacher didn't want to, he didn't want to turn his wine to loose. He, uh, look at y'all ain't saying nothing here. Because you know what I'm finding out? You can't preach deliverance to nobody if you ain't been delivered yourself. Uh-huh, y'all ain't saying nothing here. You can't make nobody else live a standard that you ain't living yourself. That, oh, God, and don't you start thinking for one minute that God don't still have preachers who are living what they're preaching. You just got to stop settling for stuff because they allow you to do your pet sin. Because anytime you know on the preacher, the preacher can't tell you how to live right. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. If the preacher got a wife and a girlfriend too, he can't tell you not to fornicate. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Could I preach here? If a preacher drinking liquor, he can't tell nobody to come out of the bar or come out of that club. Look at y'all ain't saying nothing here. If he touching little boys, he can't condemn nobody else. Y'all ain't talking here. But God said I need somebody that's willing to live holy. That Shanda that's willing to live right, that's willing to walk away from it and be the example of holiness that God is calling us to be. So we can't be saved and not be delivered. Read, Sister Oda, what do you say? Matthew 1 and 21. Yeah. And she shall bring forth a son. She shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people for from what? their sins. For he what? shall save. He shall save. Save. His people. His people. From. From. Their. Their. Sins. Sins. Now listen, you can't be saved in your sin. You got to be saved from your sin. Well, y'all getting quiet here. You can't be saved with that old lifestyle. You got to be saved from that lifestyle. You can't be saved in your drunken state. You got to be saved from that drunken state. You can't be saved thinking like you used to think. But he said, be ye renewed and transformed by the renewing of your mind. Something about you got to be made new. As a matter of fact, everything about you got to be made new. How in the world is God going to save you in your sin? So when we come to church now, that's all we're looking for. What is the purpose of salvation if it's not strong enough to keep you from doing what you used to do? Why would we even come to church if after we got saved, we couldn't do what he called us to do? If he ain't got enough power to keep me saved, why save me in the first place? Don't get me used to something that's going to run out real soon. Look at y'all ain't saying nothing here. So he says, this is the angel now talking. That shall call his name Jesus. 
For he shall save his people from their sin. Now hear me. This is the message you're not hearing in this hour. We don't hear a lot of that. Listen to people preach. You know what people are preaching now? They're preaching like everybody's saved. When you come to, oh, that's that, oh, that's that condemning church. They, 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 they over there just condemning. Listen, it's not about condemning nobody. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said it's the junk you doing that's condemning you. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. See, it's just like the light being shined on you. You don't feel bad in the darkness. As a matter of fact, St. John 3, 19 said men love darkness because their deeds are evil. But when you shine the light on those deeds, then everybody get like cockroaches. And when the lights come on, they start running. That's all it is. Sin is like a cockroach in your life. And when you come to the house of God and people start shining the light, you're running, you don't even know why. It's because you got a bug in your system. Touch somebody and tell a neighbor, it's time to be born again. He shall save his people from their sin. What you got to do, you've got to come to God and see the ugliness of sin. The reason why people are not changing now is because they haven't had enough of sin yet. When you got to the point to where you see sin as ugly, then you'll stop this madness. And you reach the point in your life to where you suck a looking at yourself in the mirror. That's when you're ready to be saved. When you get to the place to where you can admit that out of all the stuff going on in your life that could make you happy, you still don't have no joy. That's when you're ready. You got to be real with yourself. Because otherwise you come to God with entitlement issues. People not come to the altar, you get so sick of them. I told them I ain't praying for people like that no more. I'm serving you notice now. If you don't want to be saved for real, I ain't praying for you. I had somebody get mad at me at the altar. Came through the prayer line. I want to be prayed for. I need God to bless me. I said, are you saved? No, I'm not ready to be saved. I said, well, then that's what God want to do for you. Well, no, I don't want to be saved. I said, well, go back to your seat because I ain't praying for you. I don't care how you look at y'all getting quiet. I don't care how you get mad at me. I'm not laying my hands on your head if you really don't want God to save you because I'm not praying that God bless you with a new car. I'm praying that he get the devil out of you. I'm praying that sin, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost sweeping over my soul. I'm praying that God change you from the inside 